Uh, hello friends, I hope you are doing fine today. Uh, I want to talk about HIV today. Uh, this is the second video that we have done in this channel so far. And I think we have to keep on doing these videos periodically because there's a lot of progress happening in those areas. And in today's topic, I want to talk about the biggest challenge to pharmaceutical companies that have been trying to find a cure for HIV. Recently, I published a video about excision biotherapeutics and their EBT-101 therapy aimed at curing HIV infection. I think in this channel, we should put a little more emphasis on the HIV condition as a cure seems imminent. Today, I want to talk about a positive development for excision and EBT-101 and also touch upon one of the many hurdles uh, that researchers have to overcome in order to develop a safe, reliable and comprehensive cure. So let's get started. <music> Welcome back. First, let us talk about the good news. The California Institute for Regenerative Medicine has awarded a grant of around $6.8 million uh, to excision biotherapeutics to support the ongoing phase one uh, by two trial evaluating the EBT-101 as potential cure for HIV. EBT-101 is an in vivo CRISPR-based therapy and first of its kind and is pioneering the field. This funding is a real boost not only financially, but it also mirrors the hopes and expectations of the community at large. This is all the more important because to date, there have been isolated but very small number of reports of people being cured completely of HIV. Two of them happened due to bone marrow transplant, uh, transplant to cure uh, cancer. The first was in 2009 and was the bone marrow transplant, uh, transplantation on a patient dubbed the Berlin patient uh, to cure leukemia. Uh, he remained in HIV remission for 12 years. The second case was in September 2020 on a London patient who received a bone marrow transplant uh, for um, a stem cell transplant for a Hodgkin lymphoma. The special aspect of all, the, all these seems to be that the donor stem cells carried the CCR5 mutation that can change the immune system to make it genetically resistant to HIV. So the good news for the HIV community is that we know stem cells with CCR5 mutations offer a solution and now we have EBT101. The reason HIV has been difficult to cure completely so far is because the virus is very devious. The virus is not viable outside the body, so random infection is not possible. However, once a person is in that, uh, infected, uh, the virus builds reservoirs within various parts or, and can stay dominant, mutate, and reappear. HIV is a retrovirus, meaning it can insert its own genes into DNA of infected cells. This is why immunization via vaccines and cure are so hard to accomplish for HIV. The most effective treatments so far are antiretroviral drugs, which suppress virus replication. Currently, keeping the viral count low is how the condition is managed. Today, I want to highlight a major hurdle that EBT-101 has to overcome in order to prevent more dangerous HIV mutations from taking place. We need to understand a concept called HIV compartmentalization. HIV compartmentalization is well known to occur in the brain cerebrospinal fluid and genital tract. Although it was uh, recognized soon after the discovery of the virus, the HIV, uh, that HIV establishes a reservoir in the brain and causes neurocognitive dysfunction, much emphasis was put on determining the mechanisms of neural uh, inju injury and uh, many approaches to protecting neurons were developed. However, clinical studies and neuroprotective, uh, with neuroprotective agents have been of uh, little or no clinical benefit. Uh, therefore, we have uh, come to a dead end out there. But there is the blood-brain barrier. Uh, so uh, once uh, the HIV uh, virus forms a, a colony within the brain, uh, it's very difficult to uh, dislodge it. The brain is an important reservoir for HIV. The virus resides in the brain, microphages and microglial uh, cells and astrocytes, which may be some of the longest living cells in the body. Here, the virus can escape the immune system and antiretrovirals. And the persistence of HIV in the brain has important consequences. A concern is that under the influence of antiretrovirals, anti HIV in the brain could evolve to become more adaptable to the brain and more neurovirulent. The evolved virus can be released to the circulation and thus spread to other tissues. This is particularly important today since multiple strategies are being considered to eradicate the virus from the periphery, that is excluding the brain. If these efforts are successful in reading the virus from immune reservoirs, but not the brain, not, not only would the neurotropic virus recede the periphery, 
but the refurbished immune system may target the virus in the brain, uh, leading to a devastating encephalitis called CNS immune reconstitution inflammatory syndrome. Uh, hence, future efforts need to be focused on either the prevention of viral entry into the brain or development of strategies that would keep the virus in a latent state in the brain as purging the virus from brain cells may not be possible with available strategies. With the advent of CRISPR, CCR5 mutation and also EBT101, the possibility of developing a cure for HIV infection seems very likely. However, due to compartmentalization, we need to remember that the several of the uh, proposed approaches potentially have a devastating effect on the brain. For such a process to be successful, a thorough understanding of the timing of HIV entry into the brain, the cell types infected, and the rate of turnover of the infected cells is important so that tailored approach to viral control or eradication may be considered. Friends, as you know, I'm not a scientist, but I'm very much focused on genomics companies working on the cutting edge from an investor perspective. But I'm going to be keeping track of this uh, going forward on a periodic basis and will bring you updates as they occur. I've put a link to reference materials in the description so that you can have a comprehensive read. Uh, let us watch EBT 101 closely and see where it goes. Uh, Excision is still a private company, but uh, with a cure in, uh, in the horizon, uh, it could potentially go public someday. And uh, we need to have a close watch in this um, particular area. And that's all from me for today, my friends. I hope you liked this video. In that case, please do not hesitate to press the like button to let me know that you like this video, or that you like my work. Also, please subscribe and help me grow this channel. Thanks and have a great day. Bye for now.